Welcome to this tutorial where we are going to look at um, the thoracic wall, right? So to begin with, these are going to be your ribs, right? And in between the ribs, you expect to have intercostal spaces, which are going to be 11 in number because remember you have 12 ribs. And if you look at this end, this is actually the medial end where we have just cut the sternum, right? So each intercostal space is actually covered by muscles and fascia. So if you remember, if you look uh, at the thoracic wall from the mid-clavicular line or from the mid-axillary line, in the mid-clavicular line, you're going to start with skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, then you meet the pectoralis major muscle. However, if you come to the mid-axillary line, you'd expect to meet the serratus anterior muscle because remember, the pec major actually ends at the anterior axillary fold. Then from those muscles, then we then expect to see the muscles that are within our intercostal spaces. In this case, the first one that is more exterior is going to be the external intercostal muscle. This external intercostal muscle, its muscle fibers run from the rib above to the rib below. And their fibers, they run downwards and forwards. Or alternatively, you can say they run downwards and medial. Right? However, these fibers do not actually reach the sternum. And they are replaced by a membrane which in this case we can appreciate here right and it's going to be your external intercostal membrane if you then look at uh, the muscle fibers that actually reach the sternum those fibers they run downwards and lateral or downwards and backwards and they're internal to the external intercostal muscles for example these fibers here that are towards the sternal end they are running downwards and backward from the rib above to the rib below. Right. Then the third muscle that is inside is going to be your innermost uh, intercostal muscle. And that muscle is actually going to span more than one uh, intercostal space. So if I'm going to flip uh, those specimens and look at the inside, after the innermost, I would then expect to see. Uh, endothoracic fascia which you, you remember that uh, towards the root of the neck it's going to form a suprapleural membrane which is attached in a triangular manner the transverse process of uh, c7 as well as the inner border of uh, the first rib and the parietal part of your pleura right so this here will actually be endothoracic fascia right. and from this specimen i'd like you to appreciate these vessels here so these are actually the internal thoracic vessels which run a finger breadth lateral to the sternum. The one that is appearing darkish, that's your internal thoracic vein. Then the one that is lightish here, this is your internal thoracic artery. Right? So vein and artery. And if you remember, the anterior intercostal spaces are actually going to be uh, given blood supply by the internal thoracic artery up to the sixth intercostal space where it then divides to give you musculophrenic artery that will then give blood supply to the lower five and then the superior epigastric artery which will then go to the rectus sheath to end by anastomosing with the inferior epigastric artery from the external iliac artery right then if i look at this here now right so these are now this is a nerve this is an intercostal nerve there I have another, right? You look at here, there I have, right? So if you remember the arrangement, you're going to say fun, right? From the coastal groove, you first expect to see the vein superiorly, the artery, and the nerve. From here, we can actually, exp we can actually see the nerves that are more inferior from the coastal grooves. That's another nerve, right? There I have another one. So that's what you expect to see in an intercostal space. And always remember, if you look at an intercostal space, the vessels that you see on the lower border of the rib above, those are your intercostal vessels. However, you can also expect to see a neurovascular bundle that is actually going to be traveling on top of the rib below. Those are simply collateral branches that are then going to give um, blood supply, nerve supply, and venous drainage in case of blockage to the main vessels. Right. 
Then, as a recap, coming back here, right? So the fibers that run downwards and lateral, which are actually going to be these ones, that run downward and lateral, that's internal, intercostal muscles. Then those that run downward and medial, they're actually going to be your external, intercostal muscles. And remember, the neurovascular bundle uh, actually lies between these internal intercostal muscle fibers and your trans innermost muscle fibers that are more transverse that are actually going to be your innermost intercostal muscles and from this specimen we can appreciate these muscle fibers that are actually spanning more than one intercostal membrane those are going to form part of your innermost intercostal muscles so that's just about it thank you for watching